الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله A great Imam, Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was one of the scholars of Imam bin Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala. He is a fantastic collection of books and fatawa and tafsir. One of his tafsir is also highly appraised as a more contemporary Salafi tafsir. And I thought it would be beneficial because it's so concise and so beneficial but so short to go through some of the short surahs as well so that way we can reflect while we're reading Quran during this holy Ramadan. So Surah Al Humaza, uh, I thought it would be befitting because it's very important during the holy month of Ramadan and outside of Ramadan for us to safeguard our tongues. And this surah should be a reminder for us and assist us in doing so, in safeguarding our tongue. And may Allah grant us success in this because it's so easy and so uh, to be casual uh, uh, with regards to the tongue and slip and speak about someone or speak ill of someone or to curse or slander or backbite or seek out caring tales about people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us, uh, guide us in you. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Waylul li kulli humazatil lumaza. Alladhi jama'a maalan wa'addada. Yahsabu anna maalahu akhlada. Kalla layunbadhanna fil hutama. Wa ma adraka mal hutama. نار الله الموقدة التي تأتلع على الأف على الأفئدة إنها عليهم مؤسدة في عمد ممددة. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم in سورة الحمزة he says سبحانه woe to every slanderer and backbiter who has gathered wealth and counted it. he thinks that his wealth will make him last forever. Nay, verily he will be thrown into the crushing fire. And what will make you know what the crushing fire is? The fire of a law kindled, which leaps up over the hearts. Verily it shall be closed upon them in pillars stretched forth. Imam Sa'di said with regards to uh, this surah, he said, woe, he uh, described or explained the meaning of woe that when we hear, for example, wail in Arabic, uh, he said, woe, a severe warning and threat of harsh punish punishment. So whenever you hear wail <coughs> in uh, the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet, والسلام, it is a word used to uh, ward off or to as a severe warning uh, of punishment and likewise that whenever you hear it uh, mentioned with regards to a sin a sin that has line attached attached to it a curse attached to it that is one of the signs that that sin is from the major sins for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu salam says لعن الله من uh, لعن الله من والله مسعن uh, من لعن الله اليهود والنصارى أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the Jews and Christians are cursed for making making the graves of their NBI uh, as as masajid uh, or uh, it, it, there's countless ahadith which have the the uh, and unfortunately right now I can't think of uh, any particular alfad or any particular ahadith and may Allah forgive me uh, which mention but whenever you hear la'in 
you hear uh, a curse attached to, and, there, and there's a, a sin or something attached to it, it lets us know that it's serious and that it's one of the major sins. Uh, then the uh, Imam Sa'di said, So, woe, a severe warning and threat of harsh punishment to every slanderer and backbiter. And then he says, Who slanders people by action and backbites them by words. And then he, he goes on to explain, The slanderers mainly defame others with their action and gestures, uh, while the backbiters mainly defame them with their words. So here, the Imam distinguished slandering and backbiting by saying that slandering takes place through mainly gestures. So for example, being in the company of someone and uh, someone, uh, you're having a discussion and the discussion uh, begins to turn about someone or someone maybe even close by you and they gesture in a, a very uh, negative way that this can be a type of slander, that they are uh, they are gesturing in order to belittle that person, to speak ill of that person, uh, and, and to uh, distort that person's character in a negative way. And the Imam mentioned that backbiting, that backbiters mainly, that this takes place with, uh, with words, so through oral language. For example, someone speaking ill, uh, speaking ill about someone, and spreading that ill, the, the, that wicked language around the community. So, for example, so and so, they're really ugly. So and so is, uh, you know, they're without any evidence, saying that they're a person from Ahlul Bid'ah. For example, they're a hisbi. They are so and so is uh, is ignorant. So and so is this. So and so is this. <coughs> and belittling that person orally through their language and using that language to spread evil around the community. And as is mentioned in an authentic hadith, uh, the Prophet Murra Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala qabarain faqal innahum illi yu'adhiban wa ma yu'adhiban fi kabir amma ahruhum fakana la yasutru minul bowl wa amal akhir fakana yamshi bin namima so the Prophet ﷺ was going by some graves, and in some narrations it mentions that they were the graves of Yahud, uh, of, Jehu, uh, of Jews. And he said, verily they're being punished in the graves, and they're not being punished for something that the people think is great, or that the people think, uh, that the people give a lot of importance to. And he said, Emma Ahad Huma, as for one of them, that he used to not uh, make proper istinja. So when he urinated, maybe it was on his garment, maybe it was on his body. Or maybe he didn't make istinja at all. Uh, or splashing or what have you. And as for the other one, that they used to carry tails, he used to Yimshi bin Namima. They used to do namima. So namima is often translated as uh, slandering. And the scholars, one of the definitions that they mention, a yimshi bin namima, that they are carrying tales throughout the community, meaning they are spreading uh, wickedness. Uh, they are spreading wickedness throughout the community. So their intention is actually to spread wickedness. That they want to, they thrive of spreading tales about other people. So for example, so and so is uh, a hisbi, and you know they and they have no hujja. They don't know anything about it. They just heard something, or they want to break down that dai, that person from Ahlul Sunnah. They want to belittle them, and they just spread it around the community. Even they might even add things to it and say, well, you know, Sheikh so and so said, and Sheikh so and so may never have said it, or Sheikh so and so may have said a general fatwa, but they take from that and they apply it to this individual in order to why is there what is their bus what is their intention is to spread wickedness throughout the community so this is namima this is namima and so this falls in uh the category of humaza of the people who spread uh these tales <clears throat> 
So then the imam, he mentioned, the slanderers mainly defame others with their action and gestures, while the backbiters mainly defame them with their words. Among the characteristics of slanderers and backbiters is that they have no interest beyond hoarding and amassing wealth and feeling pride in having it. So one of the characteristics that the people uh, who... Uh, that there's a relationship here and that Allah mentions that, uh, that about this relationship of these various characteristic, negative characteristics that these individuals have and they're all tied together. It's not just enough that they slander and backbite people and carry tales throughout the community to spread wickedness and evil. That's not enough. But instead these individuals, these same individuals, that they also tend to hoard wealth and be miserly, excessively miserly and this has uh, we see a relationship with a lot of the individuals we see today because materialism is at an all-time high and peak we're all look to individuals who have high status because they have wealth they have how many Lamborghinis how many Bentleys how many of this and this and this I mean I myself I follow certain bodybuilders that I, I enjoy following them and learning from them and we get become involved in their lifestyles you know that they attained from that but their lifestyle will not benefit them and they even bear witness against themselves not just because they collect material items that's that's not the the negative thing necessarily being wasteful is negative but hoarding hoarding and not being known for good when you have all of this wealth that you could do so much charity you could do so much khair you could spread uh, so much good but instead you you just amass the wealth not even having children a lot of these individuals they don't even have children <clears throat> and so no one inherits from them the state maybe will take their wealth when it's all gone all their Bentleys all their Lamborghinis all of their wealth all of the things all their extravagance they showed off with they gain no benefit really very little benefit in the dunya they only had fame and stardom and in the Akhirah, they will be of the Chassidim.